everyone, welcome back to the shop. Today, let's see what we can do about getting the control rods installed to the tail of the airplane. Before we begin, I want to thank the new subscribers. I think I got, on the last video, I think I picked up another 10-ish, maybe 11 new subscribers. So thank you guys very much. And if you remember from the last video, I was kind of doing the internal battle uh, with, the, with the golden rod, with the Sullivan golden rods. Um, because I didn't want to go with the 584s. Uh, and this is the three foot. And they say three foot works, and that's when I'm going to have to use a little adapters. Now, on the set that I got from the friend of mine, Brad, who dropped these off at work, this is a four foot set of the same rod. And you can see they cut one a little bit short, so this would be another three foot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and jump ship on the golden rods, because even though it's yellow, um, I'm okay with this, with the white and the black. Uh, it, it, it is what it is. It's just that this one here, if I need to chase one a little bit long, uh, which I don't think I will, but if I need to chase one a little bit long, like going to the rudder, because I think the rudder standoff might be a little bit farther away where the control rod hooks up to the, the control horn. So this is going to be, uh, this will get used in that location. Now the way I've got it set up, because it's on the other side, planes upside down, uh, I've got the servos ready to pretty much screw down. But I'm still kind of back and forth if I want to screw them down before I get the tubing run or if uh, or if I want to go ahead and screw them down now and then just make the tubing work. And it's because the tubing is going to be, I'd rather have the tubing, you know, six, six inches or a foot too long and cut it down than to have to try to figure out how to get something that's going to have to be the exact length because the three foot was kind of on the sketchy side. So like I said, I don't want to have to order up some more of these things, which would be the four foot golden rod. And I've just kind of, right now I'm kind of pretty much made up my mind on those. So I'm going to go ahead and get the other camera. I'm going to drag it over to the other side and let me show you kind of how things are sitting right now and what we have to do. So as we come on in, that's kind of how I've got, there we go, that's kind of how I've got everything set up. The one high tech, because I'm using Savix for all the control surfaces, the one high tech, uh, just because it's inexpensive, it's analog, that's for the throttle. So that's not as dire as having good servos for the control surfaces, because if that thing fails uh, and it locks up, uh, I've got an option. I got a kill switch so I could just go ahead and bring it in on a on a path To land and just before you get to the field you hit the kill switch and you land it So what I'm gonna have to do I've got up in here I need to put a let me see if I can get this at an angle where you can see what I'm talking about Right in here. I need to put a piece of uh, balsa across. It's gonna be a plank probably somewhere in the one one and a half inch wide uh, and even though I think they want you using 330 seconds, I may go with eighth inch. I haven't decided here yet. But that's where the control, that's where the tubing is going to be hooked into. I'll put one here. I'll probably put one right here across as well. And then figure out what I'm going to need in for here. Because I may come across and put one here as well. I just have to make the decision if that's where it's going to go or not. Because this is just kind of, it's too close to the middle of the rear of the fuselage. So it'll probably be right about here. And then we're going to break off. So these will be uh, for the, sorry about that. These will be for the elevator. And then right down here, a little bit lower, be for the rudder. And the rudder is going to get joined in right back here, really close to, but not going right through that hinge. I wanted to have this hinge as close as possible to where it's going to be uh, hooked up. So the control rod. Uh, into the control horn is going to go right about here, which is about, I don't know, a quarter inch or so away from the uh, the hinge. All right, because you were out there taking a look on the other side in the big room. Hopefully you saw my dilemma. I wish I had about, because they say to use three foot. Um, I beg to differ. They should never have said to use three foot. 
uh, they should have told you to get 48 inch because you can always cut 48 inch short. You can't make 36 any longer. I need about that much more tube. If I had about two and a half inches more tube, that would be perfect. Uh, it came up short of where I wanted it to be. Now, I do have options. And these are the options. Number one, called a good friend of mine, Larry, who eventually you'll see in a, a video further on up the road where I'm going to be helping him build a uh, DR1. I'll be doing the wings. I called him up to find out if he's got any goldenrod because I'm looking for 48 inch. He thinks he has some or he may have the 584 or 585, this, this, the clear stuff with the black center in it, which is, I don't even know what they call it. It's uh, it's it's almost like a, it's not carbon fiber, but it looks really close to it. But what I may end up doing, and we're going to find out because right now I got to wait. I'm not going to be able to, this is on hold now until next weekend. What I'm considering doing, because I think I can make this work, and here's where the options come in. I can go ahead. I've got one piece that's four foot, and I can run that all the way back to the rudder. And that'll work because with the elevators, I'm only moving each half. And I've had to do this in the past. I'm still questioning my sanity when I'm thinking about doing it this one. What I'm thinking of doing is because this is all I've got left of the stainless steel, uh, the 440, just threaded rod I got from Dubro. Um, and for those of you that have heard me say, heard me say it before, it's about a mile and a half from where I work. So I'm going to put a call into Dubro and see if I could pick this up possibly on Thursday or Friday. Uh, so I've got some more rod. What I'm thinking of doing is cutting off a piece about three inches long, screwing that in one side. And here's where it gets goofy. It's just a piece of nylon tube that can cover because the nylon tube itself is the same exact size as this rod. So I can use that to cover the 440 uh, all thread. And that way, as it slides through the clear tube, I've got a longer piece of this. And that would make me much happier because I can work with the end up towards the front of the fuselage because I've got those little, it's a, it's pretty much more 440 threaded rod and the piece is about that long and I showed it in the last video. That will cover that gap where it's going to slide into this tube on the end. So I'm okay with that. That I can make work. But I still question my sanity um, because I could do that right now. So what I'm probably going to do, I'm going to wait until I get a call back uh, from the friend of mine, Larry, to see if he's got it uh, because I can make a run up there on Saturday up to his house. It's about 45 minutes each way, but I can make a run up to his house and go ahead and get it and bring it back down here and then uh, get right back to work and finishing this thing up. So it's going to be a couple days for me to get it figured out, but for you guys, it's going to be less than a second. Hey, welcome back to the shop again. Yeah, it's more than just four days. It's been over a week. It's a good thing it was less than a second for you guys. Uh, where we are at... With the control rods, I ended up opting for carbon fiber because I want to have something that's more structurally solid and strong because I don't really want to have to piece these things together because I just decided at this point, uh, let's just get something in there that I know is going to work. So it's going to be carbon fiber tubing and it's one meter. So it's 39, 39.7 inches. And that should be more than enough to get the distance I'm looking for. And then what I will be doing is I, because I've got some more 440 all thread, stainless steel, mind you. And I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna epoxy glue those things into the tube. So I'll bring it down, make a little teeny sharp hook. If I have to heat it up a little bit, make a hook uh, so I can put it in and then rotate it out the side. I just wanna make sure that I've got something very strong because there's multiple ways to do it. That's probably the way I'm gonna do it. So until that arrives, which is probably several more days from now, uh, I decided that we're going to hold off on doing the control rods and we're going to move over to hinging the ailerons. Now what we're going to use on that, and this one's been used and abused many times and I've handed it off to friends when they've needed it. Uh, the wings, the ailerons on the Piper Cub, the same way they are on the D7. 
so it's a top hinge. So what I did with this, and this was back in like 2012 or something like that, I made a little teeny, let's see, that's a jig, for um, putting the Robarts in, because instead of going flat hinge, we're gonna go with the little Robarts in it. So, and this one has it for the large size, and also has it for the, the smaller size. So all we're gonna do is we're just gonna come on in, and simply enough, and I'll show you how it's going to work because it's going to be quick and easy. Just come on in with a little teeny clamp. We'll put it on, on the aileron or on the wing. We'll clamp it into position like that. And then easy peasy, we're just going to dra grab the drill. Run it through. And I wish you saw the run it through part because I had it down too low. And once that's drilled through, all you have to do is because you see, it's gonna be right up here at the top. And then you're gonna go ahead and when you slide this through and you put it into position, it's gonna stand just a little bit proud. And then it's gonna be the same way. So say that this was the aileron, and let's just say this was the wing. And then the aileron's gonna get drilled because I have to make all the marks and that's gonna be the next step. So that'll all get drilled through where that's gonna sit something somewhat like this with that gap on it. So this will be coming down through the aileron at about that angle right there. So I'll bring you right back. I don't know how well you can see it. We got the aileron hinge done. Let me go ahead and take you off the stand and we'll just kind of show you what I did. So as we can see, three hinges, three hinges, on this side, everything can sit just the way it is because the way they come out here, normally I would put like a little doubler on this side, but I think I'm just gonna go ahead, once these get epoxied in, it has enough purchase through the ball so that I think it's gonna be fine. So this will be good. This side over here, I'll have to cut these things just a little bit, of sh just a little shorter than this. Uh, and this will all be done so when everything's covered and ready to put together, I just gotta remember to put the little short nubby end inside the wing and this part just slides in. So we're good on that. Now, let me show you the other conundrum because everybody that's been watching this realizes that this thing has issues. When I had to get the center line on the wing, I had to measure from this side, you know, from here to the center and from here to the center. Realize that this whole little center section right here was built a little bit askew. So, even though the leading edge on that straight, the wing is straight across, it's the center section, just the way they put it together, it was just kind of wrong but it also reared its ugly head uh, on the wing. If you can see the size of the gap here, we're better than an eighth inch of gap. Not a problem, I mean, because we need the clearance on the wing tip anyway. Now, as we stroll down to the other side, hey look, it's touching. So I've got an option here. The ailerons are fine. They both measured out the same. From center line out to here, out to the out to the uh, end of the rib, it was 40 and 3 8 inches. We go from the same center section all the way out to here, and you see the gap. Yes, we're an eighth inch longer on this side than we were down there. So yes, the problems will still continue to rear its ugly head. So my options are sand this down or just go ahead and move this piece. And I think I'm just gonna go ahead and move this piece. Because all I gotta do is slide it this way about the thickness of the piece of balsa. So I'll cut this off an eighth inch here, and then just make a mark so I know for a fact it's gonna start and everything will be just fine. So the next video is gonna be push rods. That's not gonna be just the push rods going from the top of the bottom wing all the way out to the tail. I'm gonna do them for the for the ailerons too. Now for the ailerons, I still have to go ahead and build the, the servo box for those as well. So that's not that big of a deal. I just look at the plans and see how they want it. And so if all of a sudden you saw that I lose focus in that last little clip, for some reason my camera's doing that and I'm trying to figure out what it's trying to, uh, to focus in on because, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm about that far from the camera, so I don't know what it's trying to sum behind me, I guess. Or it could be the light shining off the top of my head. So what I may be doing on the ailerons is I may be 
because uh, I think I still have some carbon fiber tube and I'm hoping it's a smaller diameter because I don't want to have to order more carbon fiber, but I may have some around somewhere. If I can find out a carbon fiber, the push pull rods uh, for the ailerons will also be carbon fiber, just like the tail. So uh, the smartest thing to do right now is let's just go ahead and call this a video. Then I'll see you guys next time. I'm back down in the shop.